It's an uh, honor to introduce uh, my guru, uh, Professor Jawad uh, Yasin Siddiqui is an associate professor in the Department of Radiophysics and Electronics at the University of Calcutta, India. His current research interest includes ultraviolet band antennas, frequency reconfigurable antennas, tapered slot antennas, and multifunctional antennas for cognitive radio application. He is the author and co author of several books, scientific journals, and recipient of prestigious awards. He is a co principal investigator of STRD facility at the University of Calcutta. Uh, thank you very much, Chinmay. Um, I would like to acknowledge my work to Chinmay, uh, Dr. Chinmay Shaha, uh, Dr. Antar, who is our collaborator and facilitator of this work. We have worked together. And, uh, this is a compilation of the work that I've done in the last uh, one, uh, last five to six years. Uh, it's really intimidating to deliver a talk in front of uh, Professor P.K. Sarkar, who has been the most serious forward in this domain. And I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the KPD. This work will start with uh, some fundamental design of uh, ultraviolet printed ultraviolet antennas, monopole antennas, um, which was first uh, initially proposed by Dr. Ri and his students way back in 2001 from IIT Mumbai. Uh, the title of my talk is Multifunction Antennas and their various techniques, concepts and techniques. Multifunction antennas, we are <coughs> We propose some antennas, which is kind of a frequency reconfigurable antennas, as well as, as, well as frequency notched antennas. We design ultra-wideband antennas, which can work for the whole ultra-wideband, and as well as you can use some resonant inclusions to weed out some frequencies, which are desired frequencies in that whole ultra-wideband ultra spectrum. So we use different uh, um, very novel techniques, which were not used earlier, and uh, we showed how you can tune those antennas and without the undesired frequencies as well as use the frequency for a mark or frequency recomposite antennas for various applications. So like I said, I'd like to acknowledge this work to Dr. Chidma Sharma as well as to Dr. Ryan Amanto, who's at the one in the College of Canada Kingston, where we have done most of our measurements and antenna characterization. So I'll start with multi frequency notched antennas. Like why do we need this uh, frequency notch antennas? You see with the design of these ultraviolet antennas from 3.1 to uh, 10.6 uh, gigahertz spectrum, we need to weed out some frequencies which is undesirable interfering frequencies. So that's the motivation like how would you if you don't want to use the whole of the spectrum band in an antenna, how would you tune that antenna so that it would work for some frequency and it would not work for some frequency. Some authors have uh, named these as filters, using integrated filters to read <laughs> out these frequencies. So our motivation is to design an antenna which would, which can be tuned and which could be used for the whole spectrum as well as would not be operating in some frequencies within that spectrum. So. When we started the objective of the work, when we started the work, <coughs> motivation came that most of the works which were done in this domain of frequency notch antennas were either having slots, multiple slots etched on the antenna or on the round thing. As you can see from the literature survey, we did, you know, they had set the slots on the patch itself which would uh, change the current path and would alter the frequency and would be the frequency and desired frequencies. And then the slots on the ground plane itself, because you know when you use a monopole and a ground plane, there's an image which forms on the ground plane and if you have any tampering on the ground plane, that will affect on the uh, impetus of the antenna. And that's how the defects and the slots on the ground plane were used in EPG structures were used to read out these frequencies. So, so most techniques were including modifications and changes in the ground plane or other ground structure. So what we did in our design, we used a simple, this is as an academician what we did just to have a proof of concept, we used a simple 
monopole, a sleepy double effect, open and a wave type thing, monopole antenna. And you can see that's the open and a wave type. We used resonant inclusions of split print resonators, the SRRs, which were used strategically on the CPW line to weed out this frequency. The novelty of this design is that the antenna part, the radiator part, and the, and the, the radiator part, and the, this resonant inclusion, this SRR, are independent of each other. The design are independent of each other. There's no slots or cuts on the ground plane, neither on the radiator. Moreover, this frequency notch is, this notch is frequency scalable. That is, you fix the antenna design, but then when you use, you can, if you want to tune the frequency, you just need to change the design of the split tune resonator. That's the size of the split tune resonator. Because this, these are sub resonators and the weeded, the notch frequency is dependent on the resonance frequency of the split tune resonator. So the design, like I said, the design and of the antenna and the SR are contributing are independent of each other. And this concept can be extended to any CPW radiator. It need not be a monopole antenna. It can be any, the radiator can be of any shape, size, any dimension. And, but it has to fall into, the spectrum has to fall into the purview of the split ring resonator. The, the excitation of the split ring resonator, the frequency, operating frequency of the split ring resonator, so that it will without the frequency. And moreover, if you want multiple notches, you can use multiple SRRs along the CPW line to weed out multiple frequencies. So this was one of the paper which was published in actually uh, transaction in 2014, which has the whole of this design concept of this work. This is how the fabrication prototype looked like. You see from the top, it is a simple printed circular monopole antenna, a CPW monopole antenna. When you flip it over, you can see two a pair of square splitting resonators in very close proximity. The design consideration, the, <laughs> the physics is that the axis of this splitting resonator should coincide with the start line of the the, the <coughs> start line of the CPW coplanar wave guide. You know the even in odd modes that is excited in the coplanar wave guide. So, this axis of the SRR, they should be at the center, that is, should be between the signal line and the ground plane of the coplanar wave line. And that is where the split ring resonators are excited by the magnetic fields. When you have the circular concurrence of the split ring resonator, and that's how the split ring resonator get excited. So, you want to maximize the magnetic field which is going through the axis of the SRR. That's how we strategically place the SRR on the CDW so it gets excited and you get a proper notch at that frequency. We also propose some design equations. In this design equation, uh, this closed form expression from which you can determine the, the resonant frequency of the split ring resonator. You don't have to use a simulator. And then you can design the split ring resonator according to this design, design equations and then you can place it on the CPW, on the back side of the CPW line and you can get a, um, the desired result. Like this are two representative plots. You have one um, with the measured and the simulated plot of the, of the simple co-planar uh, field uh, circular monopole antenna. Whereas when we load the split in resonator, you can see the notch frequency in there around 6.1 gigahertz. However, you can see the radiation pattern at 3.16 and 10 gigahertz. They are more or less they remain the same as you want to, uh, as you know our CPW fed uh, or other monocot fed uh, radiator would radiate. So it really doesn't tamper with the radiation pattern, it doesn't really tamper with the ground plane. No slots or cuts on the radiator, but you can get a desired, uh, you know, like you read out the frequency and uh, maintaining the, uh, the, the finality of the antenna, antenna patterns and the other characteristics. Thing. 
This is the gain versus frequency part of that antenna. You can see at that frequency with which the antenna is not radiating, you can see a sharp dip in the gain. Whereas for the rest of the antenna, it remains same. So, this is without the SRR and with the SRR. You can see at 6 gigahertz, you can see on the right hand side, there is a dip in the, the antenna is not radiating. Now, like I said, you can have multiple notches, like reconfiguring for multiple notches. What do you do? You can, if you want to weed out some other frequency, you place another pair of split ring resonator, but with a different dimension. Again, corresponding to the frequency you want to notch. So, like that, you can we placed uh, two different split ring resonators of different frequencies of varying dimension, and we could notch out different multiple frequency from the uh, radiating spectrum. Like you can say we propose a dual notch uh, with the double SRR, dual frequency notch. Like you can see in this uh, figures, the base of the plot as well as the frequency was a maximum realized gain uh, in one of the planes. And you can have multiple notches. It again, the antenna physical dimension remains same. It's just you are shaping the, changing the dimension of the resonant inclusions of the SRR, which would weed out the frequency. You can have multiple notch, you can, if you want three different frequencies to be weeded out, you can even do that by placing three different dimensions of uh, spectral resonant around the uh, coplanar wave pipe and weed out those frequencies. Now, if you could vary the dimension of the SRR with the very subtle changes, you can also get a wide band notch. Say at some frequency you want a very wide band notch, you can also have make very subtle changes, very subtle variations of the SRR. And you can see in the, uh, in the, in the second row, there are the, the, the repetitive plots where we make very subtle changes in the SRR, the two SRR dimensions, and the close proximity of their resonances yielded a wide band notch in the in the, the ultra-wide spectrum. Um, now, interestingly, the, the, those where the earlier uh, the slides, they showed how you can achieve notches in the ultra-wide spectrum. So we, with that design, we improved it further and we saw that this antenna can also be used for another function, which is for a narrowband application, which was really interesting. In the sense that, for you can see, for configuration B, that's a frequency notch ultraviolet antenna, uh, which I just showed. For conf configuration A, you can see, if you place a shorting post on top of the spectrum resonator on the axis, you could yield a narrowband response. That is, now what you are using, you are using same antenna, for an ultra-wideband application, for a frequency notch application, as well as a narrowband application. The moment you place a shorting post, just on top of that, that is you are shorting the signal line, and the, it's a, it's a shunt strip, you are shorting the signal line and the ground plane, but strategically placed on the axis of the split ring resonator, just on top, you could yield, that is, where you are getting a frequency notch, only that frequency with the radiate, rest of the frequencies are suppressed. So now what you can do, you can use the design concept of this dual complementary antenna. Use a thinner ultramagnum more circular monopole antenna. We use the SRR, which will yield the frequency notch antenna. We use the SRR and shunt wire, which yielded a narrow band antenna radiation, uh, with radiation frequency for only the narrow band, that is, that frequency will be uh, corresponding with the resonant frequency of the SRR itself only. And now, if you could, even with that, uh, if you could remove the shunt wire and close the gap of the split ring resonator, you could yield the ultraviolet, you could restore the ultraviolet response of the antenna. So now, with one one single antenna, without this, but just changing using uh, shunts, a combination of shunt strips and the split ring resonators and closing the gap with the split ring resonator, you can make that one antenna using a using a three function for three functionalities. That is, you can use it for a 
for our frequency mass operation, you can use it for a narrowband operation, as well as you can restore the ultraviolet response. And like here you can see, you have used a, we have used a shunt wire, shocking the signal line at the ground plane of the CBW, uh, the spoke and wave type. And here the prototype, you can see the magnified uh, picture of the shunt wire on top of the signal and at the CBW. And then you have the SRR on the, on the flip side of the, of the, of the transmission line and we did this different kind of responses. So one of the application could be the, for the cognitive radio application where you have a sensing ultraviolet antenna and the recoupable antenna with a array and arrowman response for the pilot signal. So you, if you have, if your antenna can uh, do different functionalities, what you are doing away is that you are not using multiple antennas, you are avoiding the port, the mutual coupling, the, <coughs> the uh, you know, mutual coupling even, you are doing away with multiple ports on the antennas. Like you can see there, in the, in the first uh, top, the top plot of the first column, you have a, for one antenna, you have the frequency mass antenna, and the moment you put a shocking post, a shunt wire, what you get is a very sharp narrowband response. And that is a radiating, that is radiating, that frequency is radiating. Let's show that. Here you can see in the game, in the, on the first column itself, you have a notched ultraviolet antenna, the blue, uh, the blue plot, the, and the dashed line, what you can see is that the whole of the radiation is being suppressed, the gain has been suppressed, but at that frequency it's radiating. Okay, you get a gain, a positive gain at that frequency. Again, if you see the second column, the top plot, depending on the size of the splitting resonator, if you change the dimension of the splitting resonator, you can tune the narrowband response. Like your, your antenna is, has been designed for an ultraviolet response, but then now, by some tweaking uh, on the transmission line, you are basically uh, behaving, making the antenna behave as a narrow band antenna. Okay? And again, if you short that shorting pool, the gap of the splitting resonator, you can restore the ultraviolet response that's uh, shown on the second plot down there on the second column. Now, using this concept of using a shorting post, what we did, we wanted to real-time reconfigure it using uh, ping diodes. Because, so that we can switch between multiple applications, meaning uh, uh, designing a, with a split and resonator, having a notch response as well as a narrowband response. And, of course, you need to use the bias T and all those configuration. And uh, this is how we characterize the antenna. And in real time, it would show that you could make one antenna behave like a, notch, a frequency notch antenna always as well as a narrowband antenna. And when it's behaving as a frequency notch antenna, again we check the radiation pattern. The radiation pattern remains intact as you desire a monopole antenna to radiate. Okay, that was the, you know, like the design uh, uh, beauty of this configuration. Uh, that uh, you you know like you may not have space or enough uh, space for multiple footprint of multiple SRR along linearly placed along the uh, copular away line. So we use some design of using a multi-layer configuration like the splitting resonator was separately fabricated and placed on top of the transmission line. So it's sandwiched like a, a strip line. You can see the splitting resonator here. There's a cross section of the copeland waveguide, and you have another layer of uh, dielectric with splitting resonator and placed on top, which also yielded multiple responses. That is, you can, if you have space, you can, if you, I mean, if you want to weed out one or filter of multiple frequencies, you can have multiple layers of splitting resonators of different dimensions to weed out these frequencies. Then we use this concept because we know how the splitting resonator works. It has to be excited by the magnetic field. So we use this concept in a tapered slot antenna. Again, 
like initially when I started my talk, I said this was uh, design independent, design independent of the radiator, the gunplane. Uh, so what we did, we used it, a, uh, we used it with a monopole antenna, now we used on a table slot antenna. This is a table slot antenna which was designed to work from 400 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. We placed it on the aperture of the antenna and this is how the table uh, slot antenna is designed for. We know the, how the electric fields work on the aperture and hence we know how the radiating magnetic field will be there in this configuration. This is the current standing wave of the antenna. This is uh, the reflection magnitude, the reflection coefficient and the gain of the antenna working from 400 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. This is the radiation pattern of the antenna. So using this design, what we use? We place the SRR on the aperture of the antenna. Now, from 400 megahertz to 10 gigahertz, you may not need all of those frequencies, okay? You may need to weed out some, filter out some frequencies which are designed so that they don't interfere. We used this spectrum resonator on the aperture, you can see there, and this yielded very sharp notches. As you can see, depending on the SRR 1, 2, 3, 4, depending on the dimension of the SRR, just based on the aperture of the table slot antenna, you can weed out the undesired frequencies for the spectrum. So we have the S11 plot with frequency and then we have the gain plot. Here, there also you can see there's a very sharp dip in the in the, in the gain of at the frequency the SRR has been designed for. Then again, we show placing the SRR on the co-piano waveline. If you can strategically place it, even on the micro strip line, depending on the fringing of some of the fields in the micro strip line, how it works and how the magnetic field will penetrate the axis of the SRR, you can also place it on the on the, on the, on the microstrip line to get a desired notch in the frequency. But again, in the e plane and the h plane, the radiation pattern, since they are subvertent resonators, the, the size, the dimension doesn't really deal with the, with the wavelength of the antenna, operating frequency of the antenna, you can see that, except that the frequency it's been designed for, it doesn't really affect the radiation patterns of the antenna, even when it's placed on that aperture. So these are some of the work which was uh, published in the magazine. And so concluding, I would say this design concept for frequency notch antenna and having a, designing a narrow band antenna from one single antenna has been proposed and uh, this notch frequency, this can be a notch frequency as well as the narrow band frequency can be adjusted. Frequency adjusted as long well as your main and primary antenna radiator operates in those frequencies. What is important is the alignment of the SRR. Do you remember the SRR, how the, it needs to be penetrated to the magnetic field? So this alignment is critical to optimize, to get very sharp response, very sharp notches and responses. And frequency, even this uh, narrow band uh, response can be frequency tuned by changing the dimension of the SRR. Okay, and that's, uh, so this is a uh, 3G. Uh, <laughs> the Chinmai's uh, uh, workplace in Trivandrum. And we have a book on multifunctional antenna, multifunctional ultraviolet antennas by CIC Press, which was recently published uh, with Chinmai, myself, and uh, the doctor. And there's a copy of this book with Chinmai also. And thank you. students
Now I would like to call Dr. Malakuri ma'am. Please come up on the right and the president of the professor here is